Hello, and welcome back to Eerie Covenant. Oops, said he wants to go. He's camera shy. It's my baby. <laughs> How are all you lovely witches today? Um, I am still working on the Dark Arts Part 2 video, so give me till probably tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know. So, today we are going to be talking about witch history. I thought this would be interesting and a cool topic to talk about. I did a lot of research and I included some uh, witches that I really like. Uh, it's important to know our history, so I thought it'd be cool to make a three-part video series so we can learn some things. This one's going to be, like I said, about my favorite witches in history. Part two and three will be about the burning times. So let's start by learning some of my favorite witches. All right, I got it all written down here. So Tichaba is the first. I absolutely love Tichaba and uh, the story of her. So her exact origins are unknown, but believed to be from Barbados or part of the Arawak tribe from Venezuela. We do know Tichaba was a slave and the first to be accused for witchcraft in the Salem witch trials in 1692. She confessed to being a witch and after torture gave names of other witches. It is theorized that Tichipa told the girls she was in charge of taking care of before she was accused, tales of voodoo, witchcraft, and even played a divination game with them. The girls began to act possessed, one moment, and the behavior for the way these girls were acting was blamed on Tichipa. After she was accused, she became important to the church for identifying other witches. This is what saved her life. She was not hanged or burned, but imprisoned. It is believed some years after she was released and may have run away with her husband, but what happened to her exactly is unknown. Mm. This coffee is so amazing. Anyway. So, my second favorite witch is Alice Pateller. Born in 1263, she was Ireland's first recorded person condemned for being a witch. Alice had a few husbands who were wealthy that had died, leaving her their wealth, or widow's benefits. First husband was William Outlaw of Kilkenny, Ireland. He died in 1285. Then Adam Blund of Cullen, he died in 1302. The third husband, Richard Val of County Tipperary, I think that's how you pronounce it? I don't know. Anyway, after his death in 1316, Alice took proceedings against her stepson for recovery of her widow's money. Oh, oh my god. Anyway, which this may have been why she was accused, or the start of it, because the son was angry at her. Her fourth husband was John Poer. In 1324, John fell ill and accused her of poisoning him after he died. Just gotta flip my little notebook here. I wrote a lot down for you guys. All the information I could find and also the knowledge that I knew from them. Alright. So the children of her previous husbands accused her of using poison and witchcraft against their fathers. Also, she was accused of denying the faith of Christ in the church, holding secret meetings at night to perform witchcraft, sacrificing and cutting up animals, using sorcery and potions to control people, and having a familiar and killing her husbands. 
Alice had friends in high places, so she fled, never to be seen again. However, her servant was flogged and burned at the stake November 3rd, 1324. I really like her. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got the third of my favorite witches, Mother Shipton. So, if you haven't heard her story, um, I absolutely love it, and apparently you can still go visit the cave she was born in, and I will do that one day. I'll be moving to Ireland soon with my fiancé, so anything's possible. So Mother Shipton, a feared and highly regarded prophetess of the 16th century, born to a mother who was a suspected witch as well, Mother Shipton was described ugly and disfigured, so much that they believed her father was the devil himself. Despite this, she's known as England's greatest clairvoyant. She predicted the plague, the Spanish Armada, the Great Fire of London, and the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. She actually died normally of old age. in 1561 but due to her being a suspected witch she was denied being buried in a graveyard she was buried on unholy ground on the outer edges of York and nobody knows where where her grave is today all right the fourth witch Marie Laveau I love her too. One day I'd love to go to New Orleans. All right, born in 1801, was a Louisiana practitioner of voodoo who was renowned in New Orleans. She practiced root work, conjure, Native American and African spiritualism, as well as what is known as New Orleans voodoo today. She became known as the voodoo queen little is known about her magical career, but she is known as a powerful voodoo priestess. In 1881, she died peacefully in her home. People today and back then said her spirit has still been stalking the streets of New Orleans. Well, a little bit more about rumors about her. Um, the facts are kind of jumbled about Marie Laveau, but she apparently had a pet snake named Zombie and I do know that she worked in a beauty salon and it was said that a lot of the um, more higher up rich people would come to her to do different spell work and that is how she kind of got away with a lot so that brings me to the fifth Thomas Ware a respected Scottish soldier, and yes, this one is a male, born in 1599. In 1670, Thomas fell ill and began to confess to a secret life of crime and vice. At first, his confession was dismissed due to his standing, but later he and his sister were taken to be interrogated and tortured. Thomas confessed to other things, but his sister lost her wit and accused Thomas of practicing witchcraft. She said Thomas would be picked up by a fiery coach to take a trip where another man gave Thomas supernatural intelligence. She stated that Thomas had a magical staff topped by a human head that held the source of his magic. Thomas confessed that the accusation was correct, sealing his fate. He was executed by fire, along with his magical staff. I hate that all these witches were tried and burned or hung, and even innocent people that weren't witches, but we're going to talk about that later. These are just some of many who were killed for being a witch. Others were innocent, like I just said. In the next video, part two to witch history, we will go over the Malleus Maleficarum and the burning times. 
Then part three, we will go over how early pagans and witches would practice and how it is different today. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment about your favorite witch in history, if you have one, with love and light from Erie Covenant.